three, four, five. Welcome back to HVAC Review. In today's episode, we will be comparing the worst and the best DIY mini split on the market. You will get an inside look of what's hiding behind the covers, and at the end of the review, we're gonna be destroying the inferior unit. Keep watching and you're gonna understand why. This unit should not be on the market, at least in US, Canada, or EU. Trust me, it's gonna be fun. We've got what we consider one of the worst DIY mini splits right here. And beside it, we have the unit that we reviewed a few months back. And if you wanna check that video out, feel free to click the link below. Right now, we believe that this is one of the best DIY mini splits on the market. Now there are several reasons for that, including price, build quality, efficiency, and more. Now both of these units are one ton, 110 volt versions. That allows us to make an apples to apples comparison. We will take a look at the components and specifications. And if we find something unverifiable, we're gonna deliver lashes just like how it was in medieval times. It's gonna be fun. Instead of whips, we'll be using sledgehammers. We've done it before. You say this guy is a one ton, but how can we be sure without any verification? It could easily be a half ton unit. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So I'm looking at the listing. Here's what they claim. The capacity is advertised on one ton, 12,000 BTU. And it is said to be up to 50% more efficient than conventional mini splits. Hmm. Let me explain something. Manufacturers can make all sorts of claims regarding heating capacity, cooling capacity, and efficiency. And this is why they need to provide proof specifically through AHRI certification. Now keep that in mind that AHRI is a third party and they cannot easily be fooled. To simplify this, the manufacturer sends the equipment to the AHRI testing lab. There the equipment undergoes testing to identify its capacity and efficiency. In this case, there is no AHRI certification backing up their claims. There is no certification for SEER2 rating, heating efficiency, and capacity. But this one has it. I put it on the screen for you guys so you can see. The certification shows that this unit has a nominal capacity of 12,000 BTUs at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Cooling efficiency rating is 19 CR2, and the heating efficiency rating is 8.5 HSPF2. Now let's pull the panels off and see what's under the cover. Since these units look almost identical from the outside, it could be difficult for the consumers to make a decision. But once the panels are off, now that's a different story. So I just wanna add, with our channel, we're not just showing pictures, we're actually opening up the panels, showing you what's inside these units, and specifically showing you the difference. We'll get them here, pull the covers up, and show the difference. When it comes to higher efficiency, that can only be achieved with a variable speed compressor like this one here. So this is a variable speed compressor that runs on DC voltage. This inverter board changes the AC voltage to DC voltage, allowing the compressor to speed up and slow down as needed. Without an inverter board like this, you can't achieve high efficiency. It's impossible. So without this inverter board, it's basically operating as a single stage system. Yeah, oh yeah. Now let's see what's in here. Nope, no inverter board. We have a single stage compressor. That's bulky, that's huge. Yeah, that's a big bulky single stage compressor yeah. paired with a 55 microfarad capacitor. Polypropylene capacitor. Wow, no inverter board. Now this has a five microfarad capacitor for the fan motor. They could have easily just put a dual capacitor on here. I'm not sure why they did that. Yeah, they had to complicate this. Why, why couldn't they just do a 55.5 dual run capacitor? Right. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. And again, versus this one has the inverter board and a DC compressor. So all the other components are pretty much the same. We've got a four-way reversing valve here, filter dryer, accumulator, same thing on this one. Four-way reversing valve, filter dryer, accumulator. Standard stuff. Standard stuff. And this one here has a temperature sensor right here and this one does not. So this one has no idea what the ambient temperature is. No, it doesn't because it's single stage. It's on or off, that's it. Yeah, that's it, single stage. It's not an inverter. One major thing is the coil size on this is nearly double. You can see two rows, one, two. two. And this one has Only one row. Only one row. Wow. A larger condenser coil guarantees consistent cooling and heating 
even in extreme temperatures. The larger the coil, the better. The hotter it gets outside, the more cooling power the system loses. In extremely cold temperatures, heating power diminishes just as much. This unit also has a bottom plate heater, while the other does not. Yeah, the heater is absolutely critical. Without it, the ice wool can potentially uh, destroy the fan blade. For side discharge unit, I always prefer to have a bottom plate heater. Without that, I guess that's a deal killer to me. Okay, so we have the two heads here. And as you can see, they look very similar. However, you can see the Ann Macy coil is significantly smaller than the other one. Again, the bigger the coil, the better. Yet they claim it's 50% more efficient. Oh yeah. yeah now we look at the tubes. They're both seven millimeter tubes on both of them. Yeah, they share some similarities. Yes. But definitely. When you look in here, the boards are almost identical. Terminal blocks are Terminal pretty, blocks much, are the pretty same. much the same. So you can see it has this wire here. So I'm assuming that you put regular 120 power plug on here and you can plug it into your wall and then it feeds the power from here to the, to the outside unit. I think that it could be very challenging and difficult for a DIYer to figure this out, that this runs and you gotta install a plug on here and plug it into your wall. That's very unconventional. We never seen any setup like this where the head is powered and then the head's actually powering the condenser. It's right. always the other way around. Right, and they give you nothing, nothing in the instruction booklet. Yeah. And you can't read this. Okay. It's a very low quality printing. So what do we say to these people who want to revert to a time without modern technology? It's as if they want to abandon progress. You know, <laughs> I, th I don't think there was ever a cure for stupidity. <laughs> I, I'll give you one example. Look at TVs from the 1960s versus now. How reliable were they back then or now? Yeah. Or, you know, how sophisticated they were. They are a thousand times more sophisticated nowadays than what they were in the 1960s and are tons more reliable. Right. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. There's more and more examples, but hey, like I said, no cure for stupidity. Right. <laughs> so what's the final verdict? How many lashes do we have in total? All right, well, I uh, take some notes in here. 10 lashes for falsely claiming that this system is 50% more efficient than conventional mini split. This is the conventional mini split. This is the conventional mini split. <laughs> Five lashes for not providing a clear and understandable installation manual for DIYers. Yes, just take a look at the difference here. This one and this one. I'll open this up so you can see here. And now look at this one. Very clear, step by step. Step by step. The installation for the Ann Macy was very generic and difficult for even us to decode. And I insist that we deliver five lashes for that one. 10 lashes for the unverified 12,000 BTU cooling capacity. Five lashes for not including a bottom plate heater. 10 lashes for not providing AGRI certification and no information on heating and cooling capacity. So how many lashes do we have in total now? A grand total of 45 lashes with the sledgehammers. What? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one. 32, 34, 35, 36, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, and one more for good luck. Dude, what about the head? What do you want to do with the head? Let's destroy it. Let's do it. Five. That was tough. Please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come. A lot more to come. See you next time.